Six years ago, Ellis Hammond's entire mission changed. He was a full-time college pastor with vision and passion, but broke. Now a full-time real estate entrepreneur, Ellis is the founder of Kingdom Real Estate Investors, the number one community for faith-driven leaders impacting the world through real estate investing. If you're a kingdom-minded real estate investor or entrepreneur seeking to advance God's kingdom outside the church walls, welcome to the Kingdom REI podcast, where Ellis interviews Christian entrepreneurs and investors focused on advancing God's kingdom through real estate investing. Enjoy the show. Uh, welcome everyone to the Kingdom Real Estate Investors Podcast Show. This is your host, Ellis Hammond, and this is the podcast where we spend 30, 45, two hours, five hours, however long we get, we're going to go today mm. with Christian entrepreneurs, Christian real estate investors who are really using their platform to glorify God and do good in the world and crushing it in real estate. Uh, and got a great guest with us today, Dan Lesniak. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you, Ellis. I'm, a, I'm pumped to be on here today and to you know, talk a little bit about real estate and how that's helped my life and hopefully the, uh, the people around me. Uh, how much, how, who, who creates more content you or me on, on Instagram right now? You create a lot of stuff, man. I don't know. I do. I do like one or two posts a day and probably seven to 10 stories a day. And, um, it kind of comes in waves though. Sometimes I ramp up when you enjoy it. Yeah. Mo for the most part. <laughs> You look like you have fun when you do it. Like you post like silly stuff. Like I feel like you really get a good glimpse of who you are. And maybe I seem kind of the same guy. What What do you think about that? I I have fun when it's when I can kind of think of new and creative stuff to do. Like a, a year ago, I made a lot of stuff with with my son. He I, he was five at the time, but um, yeah. So he was like kind of doing mock interviews on different topics with me. So, you know, that was, that was kind of cool. So I, I think it is a, a venue where you get to show people stuff they may not know about you or, right. or, or show off some, you know, show people your creativity um, right. or, and, and educate people, you know, let them know about things. Maybe you wished you knew about earlier in life. You know, if you use it the right way, it, it's, it's a, a fun tool you know, like anything else though, it's a tool, right? It can be, it can be used for <laughs> good and bad. Yeah. But. Before we jump into kind of the content day, man, tell our audience a little bit about yourself, kind of where you're coming from in the world, your focus, just love to learn more too. So clearly you got a five-year-old, maybe now a six-year-old kid, uh, but who is Dan? Well, we have four kids actually. Um, <laughs> he's, he's the oldest. So they're all six and under, uh, almost seven and under now, I guess, but, um, four kids. I'm married to Carrie Scholl, who is my business partner, amazing wife, mother, business lady, you know, real estate person as well. We live in Florida now. We do a mix of investing in Florida, investing in DC. We run the largest or highest selling real estate team in the DC, Northern Virginia, Maryland area. So wow. on the residential side. Uh, yeah. On residential. Yep. Uh, we, we sold over a thousand homes last year at our, wow. at our brokerage in DC, you know, we do condo developments, raise funds from, from, for, for that in my spare time, you know, I've got a lot of, a lot of hobbies. I've, I've done seven Ironmans. I, I like to hunt a lot. So I try to do two or three hunting trips a year. And, you know, when I'm not working on those kind of things I just described, I, I really like to try to spend as much time with the kids as I can. You know, they're only, they're only young for, you know, a moment in time and then it's gone. So I try Dude, to, let me ask you about that, man. That. You got, you got four kids under five, right? Uh, under six. Under six. Mm -hmm. So I just had my first, like what, Congrats. how do you, yeah, it's been, it's awesome. Like she's amazing. And I feel like every time I go back upstairs, she's like gotten older, like she's doing something new. Like it just happens so flipping fast. And yeah. I'm just curious, man, as a father of four entrepreneur, you're crushing it in multiple areas. Like, how have you like t walk me through that journey, right? Of like, what did you learn? Like, what would you go back and tell yourself at that first kid 
and growing the business. I guess I'm trying to think about, man, how, how do you pay attention? How do you slow down and yet still, you know, find success mm. in the business world? What would you go back and tell, tell yourself when you had that first kid now that you've, you've done it four times over? I'd love to hear some, some advice yeah. from me, but even our listeners. Well, I don't think there's anything that can really prepare you for it. So I don't, I don't, you know, it's kind of like you have to go through the experience to understand it. You know, kind of, it's kind of like when you're thinking about doing it, like your first real estate deal, right? Yeah. Like you can go to the meetups, listen to podcasts like this one, read books, but if you never like jump in and do it, you're not. Yeah. But would you, you change learn. anything, man? Like, you know, I feel like so many people don't realize, and I think this is what I've realized in my little girl being 14 months, like dude, she'll never be 14 months again. Like this stage is so special. Right. And I feel like there's this mindset of, oh, well, I'll spend more time with them when they get older. But yet these are some of like the best years. I don't know. I've never had the older years yet, but like, you know what I'm saying? Would you do anything different now that you've done it, you know, or, or go back to your, your, your self when you had one I don't know, like what, what have you learned or what advice can you give in that regard? I mean, I, I would just try to like fence off more time for them. I, 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 you know, I think I did a pretty good job of that, but I would, I would just go like harder on that because yeah. when you really cut off the rest of the world, put the phone down, don't think about business and just like focus on them. It's a lot of fun. Sometimes people overcomplicate it, but it's really like do more of what works and and just try to enjoy that moment, right? Yeah. You work from home or do you work apart from home? Both, but I'm I'm typically working at home more. Yeah. So yeah. That helps for sure. Well, guys, I'm excited to pull out Dan's story. I mean, clearly he's one of the highest grossing sales real estate teams in the DC area, which is incredible. He's also doing a lot of cool stuff on the investing side. And I love his journey of someone who started as an agent and is really building serious, significant wealth as an investor now, uh, but but also a man of faith. And so I just, I'm, I'm excited to kind of break down his wealth building journey. And I just think that's so important for us as Kingdom Mind investors, as Kingdom Mind real investors, real estate investors, just to hear this journey. Uh, and to be able to learn from from folks like Dan. So uh, Dan, I'm just going to pray for us, man, before we jump in today and uh, and get going. So Father in heaven, thank you so much for for just today, for Dan, for his story, for the way that uh, you've worked in his life, for his kids, for his companies. And I pray that you continue to bless him and all of his endeavors. And I pray that today would be a blessing to those who are listening, uh, Lord, that you might uh, give us wisdom as we navigate how to continue to... Um, be kingdom minded in, in a capitalistic society as investors, how we steward and build and grow our wealth, Lord, for, the, for, for your name's sake, for the flourishing of our families, our neighbors, our communities, as we pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So what, take us back a little bit. So you got started as an agent. Why? Someone like, was that like, why that path? Yeah, it was kind of an accident or unplanned, I guess. I was in, in DC at the time, I, yeah, I bought my first home when I was 23, uh, using the VA loan when I was in the Navy, did that in North Florida and did two more deals down there was a landlord went through, you know, 07, 08, all of that, uh, bought my, when I, when I got stationed at the Pentagon, I bought a home in Arlington. I was getting my, or did, got my MBA at Georgetown as well. So kind of busy doing all of that. And I, I had this mindset that I'm going to go out and, you know, go work for McKinsey, BCG, Bain Capital, one of these big consulting firms that MBA grads want to go work at. And that didn't work out. I was, you know, looking in 2011, 2012, kind of when the recession was at the height, a lot of them weren't hiring, but, um, you know, I, I did get a lot of interviews and talk to a lot of people, these companies didn't get any offers though, uh, that materialized or ones that I liked at least. And one of them told me to reapply in a year, but to go out and get a different type of experience. Like they, they, they didn't think I would be good at sales. So that's why I didn't get an offer because selling is a part of the consulting business. So they said, go get some experience in sales. And at the time I was buying my second home in the DC area in Arlington. And and I thought, well, I've, I've done this home buying thing for myself like five or six times now. I'll just get my real estate license. 
save money on my own deals, maybe help out a few friends, and then I'll reapply in a year for some of these jobs. And I, you know, got my license. Since I was working at the time, I, I, I you know, I had a, a pretty good nine to five job. I didn't have a lot of time, obviously. I also, I didn't necessarily want to go out and broadcast to my friends that come sell a home with me, even yeah. though I work at this other job, right? Yeah. So, I, yeah. so I just started to market to my own condo building, the building I lived in. I focused on 200 homes. I'm like, all right, I'll just try to get deals in this building. Since my marketing was so concentrated, it worked pretty quickly. And I, I ended up getting a pretty full pipeline like really, really fast. And, you know, I got licensed in the middle of 2011, kind of did this part time. And then going into 2012, I had more deals like lined up in Q1 than I had salary for the entire year. So I thought, okay, now's a good time forever to just like quit and go for it. So I, you know, quit my job kept the same strategy, expanded to a few more buildings. And, you know, that, that first year worked out really, really well. So you kept that strategy of like, just keep, like, I'm going to go to this condo building, I'm going <laughs> to go to this condo building. And, and, and you were selling those condos or, or you were um, selling homes to the people living in those condos? Both. The building had already sold out. So it was all resale, either helping people buy, you know, in that building or helping people that were, you know, needed to upsize, help you know, help them sell and find their next home. And I just kind of rinsed and repeated that strategy. And it, yeah, I ended up doing about 20, a little over 22 million in sales in year one. Uh, wow. And that's, that's how it started. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I love this idea of like the wealthy agent. I mean, who taught you about money? Like, how did you even get, you know, okay, cool. You just, you learned how to make it, which is the first part of building wealth. You can't build wealth if you don't make it, invest it. So like, what did you do after that? Like who, who were your mentors early on? Clearly you had the motivation to go learn sales, but where did it begin to make sense? maybe I should start to invest this. Was that yeah. early on or what? Yeah, it was early on. I was interested, I wasn't in, interested in investing in real estate, you know, ever since college, you know, like I mentioned before, I bought my first home when I was 23, when I got my license, I, I owned two condos at the time, lived in one, rented the other out that, that first year in real estate, you know, I bought one deal seller financing because I found a seller that wanted to sell and was willing to finance the whole note. I bought another deal to, to help kind of string together three or four deals in a, you know, chain of buying and selling I was involved in. So I, you know, I was interested even before I got into real estate as an agent in investing. And then I, you know, making more money as an agent helped me get more opportunities and more fuel, I guess, more money to do it. And you know, I did my first bigger scale deal the second year in real estate after, after I met my now wife, Carrie, uh, we were dating at the time, but I found a, I had a seller that had a one acre home on a one acre in Arlington, which one acre is like huge. They put homes on an eighth of an acre in Arlington. So you know, I was able to get that deal under contract, partner with a builder, and I, I subdivided it, built four homes that I've sold. And, um, you know, we, we made a pretty good check on that one. And then we, we've kind of repeated that as well. Um, so we, we've, you know, scaled the real estate team. And as we were doing that, we also scaled investing. And, you know, I, I just, ever since college, I read a, like a lot of books on it, rich dad, poor dad. Is your main strategy kind of the refi and hold? No, it, it wasn't. Um, I did a lot of building, developing and selling. I wish I held more of them. Now I do both. So now I've got a short-term rental portfolio uh, and I have a, over a hundred condo units that I'm developing and selling in DC. So if you're a young real estate agent and you're getting pretty good at sales, first of all, it seems like a great start, like learn sales. Like I always tell guys, like, it's all about like, you know, you can't build wealth, man, unless you either make money or invest money and you can't invest money unless you're making money. And one of the best ways to do this is through sales. So 
Would you agree with that? Like sales, maybe even real estate agent or sales, is probably one of the best ways to get started. If you're like, if you're seeking direction, sales is probably mm. a good start. Yeah, sales is one of those fields where you get paid for by performance, right? I think what bothered me before I was in real estate, you know, I was in a consulting job for the government and I felt like you could kind of mail it in and get a 3% raise or you could really bust your butt and maybe you get like three and a half percent raise, you know? Yeah. So sales is one of those where you really get paid by performance and doesn't have to be real estate sales. And, and it, you know, but it can also be wholesaling, like going out and finding deals. Um, that's closely related, a lot of similarities, but yeah, if you want to get wealthy, figuring out how to increase your income is, is a really good start and yeah. sales or things like it make a lot of sense, I think. And then what would you say to that same agent? Okay. Like maybe they're the, that they've done that or the salesperson who's doing that they're creating income. Like even how you begin to look for investment opportunities, like what does that transition look like? Is it, you got to stack so much first and then look to invest? Like what, what, what do you teach your agents? Cause I know you're leading a huge team, but like, you're kind of the ideal of like, man, the agent turned to wealthy investor, right? Like how do you help them begin to change that, that mindset, that framework from production to investing? Uh, you have to get control of your finances, which a lot of agents are bad at. So, you know, it takes some planning and setting aside money for taxes, expenses, you know, doing the research to figure out how to minimize your tax liability, you know, living below your means. I think all of that helps, right? Because then you can actually set aside money to invest in whatever it is. But I do think you should take advantage of the fact that you're a real estate agent and the better real estate agent you are, the more people you're going to get in front of. So the more deals you're going to see, and you're going to get access to deals and information that the general public does not have, right? The stock market world, uh, that's called like insider training or front running. Like you can't, you can't do it unless you're married to a politician, right? <laughs> so I think in, in the, the real estate world, you have this great advantage that is as an agent, you're going to get access to good deals. And yeah, you can start small with just like pick one deal a year that you're going to do for yourself, right? A flip or a hold or you know, a short-term rental. So I think, I think you just have to make it a goal that you're going to acquire real estate, take advantage of the opportunities that will come in front of you. Yeah. I love that. Dan, how long, how long have you, uh, I know we talked about your faith briefly earlier on the show, but how long have you been, would you say you've been a Christian? Is that something you grew up with for a long, you know, early in your childhood or was that later in life? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I grew up in a Christian household, went to a Christian high school. Faith has been something I've been around as long as I can remember. You know, I, I would say over as an adult, I think that's one of the things about having kids is that's created a stronger desire in me now because like, you know, I'm in charge of other yeah. <laughs> other souls, other, you know, human beings, you know, that's created a desire in me at a higher level than, you know, any other time I can remember in my adult life to make sure I'm passing those teachings on to them, you know, exposing them to, to, to faith and church and the same things that, you know, my parents that, yeah. I, you know, did for me. I, I'm curious. I, I love to go back to, um, I think one of the, a lot of the conversations we have on the show sometimes is like the financial conversations or the money conversations that you grew up hearing just maybe in church and how that either positively shaped you or negatively shaped your view on money um, as a kingdom real estate investor. Is, is there anything you remember or like, or are there any, are there any stories that stick out that, that either positively or negatively, because I feel like sometimes more negatively, unfortunately, from our faith backgrounds, but has anything come to mind there that maybe has shaped the way you thought about um, investing? You know, I, I remember being taught to be grateful and have gratitude. And I think it's, I think it's hard to actually get ahead financially if you 
aren't grateful hmm. for what you know you have now um for some reason i don't know why but i just you know i, I feel like you have to have gratitude for what's here or like you just won't learn how to deal with more right um and, and maybe that goes into to like if you have gratitude you know maybe those type of people are better at planning and living below their means and you know making longer term decisions at the cost of you know maybe shorter term things that's so a think, great point i think because that i mean that's the pillar of building wealth right like you have to you have to let time do like give time time you know like so that's i mean if you're not grateful for where you are in this season yeah that's that's excellent man i love the way you connected that sorry not to interrupt i'm just like I was like pointing that out, but now I'm sitting here thinking like, man, that's so good. <laughs> I was even sitting on the boat yesterday. We went out, it was like four o'clock, finished up early, took my family on the boat and, you know, a little 14 month old girl, she's like playing on the seats. And I just like, was just kind of sitting there thinking, cause I'm definitely prone man to, to not be grateful and to, I'm, I'm kind of visionary, probably much like you and always thinking about next steps for the business and next steps for my family and where we're going, where we're heading, what we're building. But I just, I, I just told my, I remember sitting in that moment thinking, Ellis, you're, you're living your best life right now. Like you're living your best life right now. And not like in a, you know, not in a real prosperity, we're just, just being grateful. Like don't give up this moment, you know, like this is a sweet moment. And so I, I really appreciate that reminder in that regard. Anything else that comes to mind? about your faith and just the, your influence uh, today as an entrepreneur or investor? You know, I, I think just being a good steward of what you have. And I think, you know, making smart investing decisions, smart real estate decisions uh, is, is a good way of being a good steward. If you do it correctly, it's going to allow you to be a great example for others. It's going to allow you to, give more support to organizations and, and people that support your values. So, you know, I, I think if you look at it, you know, succeeding in this area, isn't just succeeding in real estate, right? It's not just about like building up your bank account. It's, it's giving you more fuel to help other people help yourself um, yeah. spread the values that you believe in and, and want to see, you know, more of in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I want to wrap up here just a minute, but I want to actually, I was sitting on a, I went out to dinner with a couple other Christian entrepreneurs the other day. And I mean, this is so fresh in my mind. You're one of the first guys I've had a chance to kind of talk to since I did that, but it was really interesting. Like none of them, all, all of them are entrepreneurs. Right. And then they're Christian entrepreneurs. So like, Pretty much all of them are isolated. <laughs> Meaning, like, you know, entrepreneurs are lonely altogether, but then like no one's really talking about their faith either either. But it, what was so interesting is like how everybody really longed to want to they wanted to be heard even at that dinner, like, hey, I do identify with Christ, even though I don't feel like I always do that in my companies or in the marketplace. And just would love to hear, man, or encouragement or challenges that you might share with our audience of ways that either you do identify with Christ in, in the marketplace, or maybe even ways that you struggled with that in the marketplace and living out your faith. Um, maybe just lessons learned, or again, sometimes it's helpful just to hear what you're going through to encourage folks who are listening to this show. Yeah, I, I do think it's always, you know, I, I do think it is a, a challenge or, and, and can be, and, um, you know, as entrepreneurs, we want to tell people, like how we're doing something like the nuts and bolts of it, the tactics and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's vulnerable to go out there and connect it to your faith, um, from a bigger strategic point of view. It's, um, you know, it's, it's a more personable, more personal, more vulnerable. So, you know, I, I do think that is something that we all struggle with. I, I certainly struggle with it. And then there's also the fear of, hey, if I put this out, people will judge or now they're going to think like, well, he did this or that. He's not perfect. Right. So there's yeah. there there are uh, 
you know, definitely struggles and, and fears that I have around it for certain. Don't you think though, there's like more people who want to identify with it, but like it kind of the same way, feel the same fears that you do. And they're like, just more quiet because of that. Like there's probably more of us out there though, is my point. <laughs> right. Yeah. I definitely think there are, <laughs> you know, sit one of the guys he was saying, I thought this was so insightful because he had just became a Christian, like in the last 18 months. So I'm not going to say his name. He's kind of a polarizing personality on the internet. <laughs> and so, um, but, but what was cool is like, I watched his content before and I'm like, I do not like that guy. Like, I do not want to hang out with this guy. And I found myself at dinner with him, like sitting right next to him. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be a very interesting night. Well, come to find out, like in the last 18 months, this guy's come to Christ. And so he was like very eager and like, you know, talkative about his faith and, and what he's been learning. And what he expressed to me was like, you know, it's so interesting how all these guys that I've known for so long, now that I'm a Christian, are like telling me they're Christians. And he's like, well, how come you never said any of this, dude? You know, he, he was kind of like upset with them. Mm. And, and one of the insights he, he said, I thought was so fascinating. He's like, he's like, everyone's so scared about the 5%. He's like, there's, because here's the reality. There's 5% of people who stand for nothing, right? There's 5% of people that stand for everything. And that's kind of, you kind of look at our culture today. Like there's this woke mob, you might call it, right? They just want to stand for everything. And he's like, but the majority of us just want to stand for something. And I was like, hmm. wow, that's really powerful thought of like why we are being so quiet because of the 5% when the majority of folks truly, I think even in this country, maybe it's not Jesus, maybe it's something else, but they at least stand for something. And right. They don't stand for everything. I think we're quiet because we're worried about the small minority that wants to stand for everything. And dude, you can't stand for everything. It's impossible. Yeah. Um, Especially yeah, what when do you, so I many just, of them are curious. Your thoughts on that? Like so much of everything is conflicting. It's like if yeah. you <laughs> support A and B, well, B doesn't like A or B is you know, yeah. A is directly yeah. against B. Right? Yeah, it's so. it's really crazy. Like if you I just is you know if you really play that out. Anyways, yeah. man, I, I just thought it was such an encouragement to me. I want to give that encouragement to you, but also encouragement to our listeners of um our industry, man, needs more people who are bold for Jesus. And I think there's probably a lot more people who want to see people stand for something versus stand for everything. Because I think standing for everything's a dying um it's a dying equation or a dying i'm not sure what to say like a, it, it can't last forever like you can't stand for everything and be a healthy person anyways man dude i'm i'm glad that you you came on this show i'm, I'm pumped to continue to see your journey online uh any last thoughts before i let you kind of share where folks can follow along with you um no i you know hope, hopefully this uh interview uh you know motivates inspires some people um and you know the, i think the biggest piece of advice i leave leave people with is to just take action right like education and uh books and you know networking groups all all that is is great but if you want to learn sales you have to go start trying to sell if you want to learn how to do real estate deals you got to go start trying to find a real estate deal right you have to take that first step yeah, time under tension, right? I mean, it's like the only way to, to get better, to get stronger is like you got to do the work to get better at the work. So uh, we'll do where, where, I mean, you got a great Instagram, guys. If you're not following Dan uh, on Instagram, make sure you go do that. Uh, 40,000 followers, 45,000 followers. How does a dad of five be cool enough? Like, what are your kids going to think <laughs> when they become, you know, teenagers and their dad's got, you know, 80,000 followers at that time. That's going to be hilarious. Yeah. Well, I'm, you know, it's funny because the kids are all like on TikTok, and that's actually where my biggest following is. Um, yeah, I made a lot of content last year that did really well. And that, that accounts like over 300,000 now. So my, my hope is, you know, someday social, me having a big presence on social media will, you know, somehow help them or yeah. protect, at protect least make them, you like you know? the cool dad, you know what I yeah. mean? Like at least give you some, some brownie points. Well, I, awesome. I know how to use it. Right. So I yeah. know, I know how to make, you know, keep tabs on them when, when the time is necessary, they're not on that yet. So, right. Um, 
but it is cool to like have them, like I mentioned before, like they start to participate and um, do some of the TikToks with me and stuff like that. So, well, man, so TikTok guys, go follow him. Any anywhere else to kind of learn or where, where you're putting out content? How about agents? I mean, especially for um, agents yeah. who are looking to, to build and grow wealth. Yeah, so we we've got a podcast where I interview entrepreneurs, real estate agents, real estate investors. It's the Hyperfast Agent Podcast. Uh, I do a weekly text letter where I I kind of share more personal stuff or things behind the scenes. So uh, you can sign up for that text letter at uh, danlesniak.com. You know, other than that, just just really any and all social media. Awesome. Dude, I enjoy this, man. Guys, if you enjoy this as well, take a screenshot, go on Instagram, put it in your stories, tag us, let us know what you enjoy, let other people know uh, to check this show out as well. I appreciate you guys being here. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Dan. Thank you.